Hi, everybody. We'll wait one, two minutes uh, for the rest of the attendees, and then we get started with the webinar. Good, let's get started. So, <clears throat> hi everybody to uh, today's guided onboarding session, onboarding webinar. I'm Andreas Willig. I'm the uh, community manager at Specflow. Good, um, this session is getting recorded um, and we will upload it to our YouTube channel. More about that later. Um, some quick info about this webinar. It's a hand-on session. So idea is that you do the same stuff what I'm showing you on, on your own to get more, more feeling about it. Um, please use the Q&A tool for questions you have somewhere in Zoom down there. Um, a Q&A button and please use this for, for the question. It's, it's easier for me to then see what questions are already answered and what not. I will try to answer them um, when they fit to the current task where I am. Uh, if not, I will answer them at the end. There will also be a separate Q&A section at the end. And after the webinar, uh, when you leave the call, there's a short survey, uh, two or three questions. It would be cool if you can uh, if you fill it out. Um, but before we get started, I have a question to you. Um, and I would like to know if you have been, have you have been using Specful before or uh, is it completely different? So there should be pop-up open there if you could quickly answer it. Uh, then we can get started. Good. Okay. Uh, three quarter are new people to Specflow. No. Uh, I hope you will like what you see. 
Good, but now let's really start it. So I have prepared, I have a virtual machine, Windows 10 virtual machine, complete entry, freshly set up today in the morning. The only thing what I have installed is Visual Studio 2019. And when we have a look, a quick look at the workloads that I have installed, um, it's the standard. So it's ASP.NET and web development, it's .NET desktop development on the .NET core cross-platform development. Uh, one of them is needed, but uh, it, from experience, I always needed all of them for my normal project work. Good. Um, yeah, first thing when you get started with Swagflow is and with Visual Studio is that you install our Visual Studio extensions. This gives us a lot of feature uh, that makes working with Spectrum quite easy. And let's start with this. So we started it. Let's say continue without code. Don't create a project yet. Uh, we only install the extensions. And you do this with the Visual Studio Extension Manager manage extension and Specflow. And okay, I, I installed it already on this machine. Um, let's quickly do the dance, uninstall it. And if you install or uninstall it, you get this uh, VSX installer launched after you made the change in Plus Visual Studio um to get it installed so as every other visual studio extension takes some time good so it's not deinstalled start it now again we all on the on the, on the same start Let's install it. So you don't have it here installed. You have it only on the on online. That's the spec flow. And then you have the spec flow for Visual Studio 2019. We also have an extension for 2000, Visual Studio 2017. Um, that's the two Visual Studio versions we are currently supporting. <clears throat> So in the meantime, I will share with you in the chat so that if you need something. So what we are doing is we're following the, the getting started step-by-step -step get in this webinar. I'll share that quickly the link with you. Um, if I have it there. So extension is finally installed. Good. Um, the first thing what we need to do is we want to test something with Specflow. And to do that, we need something to test, our so-called system under test. And <clears throat> for that, we may, the example of today is a simple calculator. It's a really reduced functionality calculator. And we make a, implement this in a class library. Um, searching for class library, we want the uh, C sharp .NET core one, yes. And we call this the uh, spec flow calculator. And next we want that we take .NET core three one. Okay, this is new. Uh, we are supporting everything here well, from spec flow. Um, but we stay at the long term, of course, we won't for today. Good. So let's, let's close the test explorer for the moment. 
So normal Visual Studio. And what we're doing is we replace this. <clears throat> List this code. Um, our calculator is, yeah, as mentioned, quite a reduced one. Uh, it has two, two properties, first number and second number. And we have add method, which, which will be returning the result, but it's not yet implemented. Click compile. And yeah, everything is working. I quickly share this code in the chat with you that you don't have to write it by hand or you can copy it from the article. Um, I'll give you a moment to catch up. This is the longest part. Good. So ah, we should also rename the class for the file. Class one is not nice. Good, good, good. So now we have our the, the, the logic we want to test. Now we can create the project with our specflow scenarios. And for that, that's the first time we are using a feature from the specflow uh, extension, because with the extension, you get a project template which creates a completely configured project for you. So let's use this. We call it uh, specflow calculator.specs. Dot specs for specflow for specifications. Let's create this. And now we have also a step in the wizard. Uh, yeah, we want .NET course three one, but you have here also all the frameworks we are supporting. And then you can choose your test frame for what you're using. We are using our Specflow Plus runner today, but we also have support for XUnit and Unit and MS Test. And we need for later, we, we are big fans in the team of the Fluent Assertions Library. So you get it, you can get it with it, and we will need this later. So let's create this project and I'll show you what's what's happening. So we have here now the project dependencies are already all set up correctly. We have some folders. Uh, first, uh, the empty folders are, uh, come to that in a moment. First, we have to feature the features. Here we have our feature files. Um, yeah, that's that what you get, that pop up you get if you. A new machine, doing it the first time. Uh, feature files. So, uh, Spectral uses Gherkin, uh, where you can write your feature files. And we have here already a scenario for calculator. What a surprise for adding two numbers. Uh, feature files is you have a title and you have some description. And then you have your list of scenarios. You can also tag them. And the second one where we have also code is uh, calculator step definitions, where then uh, you have the implementations. Uh, how spec for works is you have these this, this steps. So given the first number is 50 and you have to say somewhere what should happen if this is executed in the test. And this is this you do in the, in the step binding. Uh, we will implement them some later and I go to the details from them later. So to them later. Uh, the other folders are, this is so good practice, what we learned in projects. So hooks is hooks are, are events, lifecycle events in, in Spectrum for your automation. You can hook into, okay, for every, before every scenario you want to execute something or after everyone or after every step or before the whole test run. And good practice is to have these all in one, one folder because it's, if you have multiple, it's getting confused to find all of them. And, and drivers is already, there is a, a so called driver pattern. Um, 
it's 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 like any other patterns how to structure your implementation or test automation implementation um we have some we have an article as far as i remember in our documentation i can share that with you you can read this later it's a cool uh, uh pattern to structure your automation Good. Um, yeah, we have our feature files. So um, let's compile and uh, have a look at the test explorer because we're fully integrating in the whole ecosystem. So we have now here in the test explorer, the project, the calculator feature and the first scenario. And let's see what's happening when we have execute this. Okay, nothing happened. It's still still blue. So, what 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 is going on? So, in our case, because we are using the Spectral Plus Runner, and this is a new machine, you need um, to activate the the Spectral Plus Runner. It's uh, Spectral Plus Runner is free is free, um, and it will be stay free forever. Uh, but you need uh, a Specful account to use it. And when you go to the output panel to tests, uh, you have to here some output uh, activation, please sign up and you have a link and then you press control and click on the link. Yeah, okay, multiple browsers are opening. So you need only one, get a welcome screen, press sign in with Microsoft. So you connecting this with your Microsoft account. I already have my credentials here. Um, when you're doing this the first time, you get some steps in between. So um, I can show you this in the documentation. Um, we were here with the link, you saw this. And if it's the first time for you, we have to ask for this uh, OAL style log for Information is, is coming. Uh, we really only get the basic information. So first name, last name, email address, and uh, that's it. Then some short questions uh, about you and it's done. And this is, this you have to only do once uh, for every PC where you have. And that at the end, you're on the same screen like I. Welcome to Specful Plus Runner. And a switch, switch back and random scenarios again. So let's go there and then we run them again. We see there's R. No. Okay, we just do the builds. Dun, 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 dun. What do we see in the output? Yeah, uh, finished. So, Visual Studio. So, it's yellow and yeah, it's executed, but yeah, what is happening? So, let's have a look at the additional output. And we see here uh, output about config and stuff. And then we see here for our steps from the feature file. Let's put this side by side. We have here the given the first number is 50 here. We get here a pending exception, pending. And pending means there is no implementation. And the other st steps are skipped because of errors before. Good, then, then let's implement the first uh, binding. Uh, one nice feature from the Visual Studio extension is you see, yeah, you have Synthelix, Hyrix, but you have also uh, navigation and you can go, it's, it's in your normal navigation uh, keyboard shortcut. So we have a go to definition with F12. And with that, we jump directly to our step class with the method words already is here. Uh, quick explanation how this is working. So the matching between this step and which method should be executed is via this attribute. 
we have given, then, and then attributes. And the string here is a regular expression. And in that case, is, is it one where we have a parameter? So we have this, um, I'm not sure it's called uh, regex group, something like that. And this is the parameter here. And what is also done is we also we, we support different types and we convert this already to an integer. Cool. So how do we implement this now? We delete this everything. And we need our, our uh, calculator class and instance for that. So first we make a dependency between the project that we can access it as every normal project. And then we make here, in this case, it's really, really the simplest thing uh, what's possible. So we make a private uh, calculator normal field and we instantiate it already here because more, it's not more, uh, not more is needed. Um, if you have a comp more complex application, that's probably a little bit com more complicated. And now in our, our step here, we can say on the, on the, oh, so it should be if on this form, a calculator first number equals number. Good. <clears throat> Let's combine and run the scenarios. Um, one information for you. Um, so, because we have no state here in this binding class, um, for every, every scenario <clears throat> has its own instance of this class. So there is no sharing of state between, between scenarios if you have a normal field in a step definition. So it's still still yellow. So what is happening again in the output? The first step is done, done, executed, but the rest is isn't done. So okay, yeah. How we need to implement this? Good. Let's continue here. So the second number is that's also calculator. Second number equals number. Then we have the van step. <laughs> now it gets a little bit yeah, more complicated. So when we say calculate the add, if you can remember, uh, this add method returns the result. Um, but this here we only do the method and the assertion is in the then step. So we need to get this result here. And let's let's do it again with a simple uh, field. So we have int result, int result, that's okay. Or let's call it actual result. And then we can say actual result is add. And to make it more readable, we rename the parameter to expected result. It only it's all it's only about the order. There is it doesn't matter how the parameter is named. It's it's the order of the parameters. And now we can say, and now we can say uh, we make the assertions, and that's also where we can we they use the floor, fluent validation library I mentioned before. We can really write nice assertions with that. So fluent assertions. And then we can say an actual result. And with that, with the fluent assertions, we get some extension methods. This should. And then gets continuous B expected result. By this. And build successful. Yeah, and this is this is really nice to read. Or good. Let's run this, and we should see it. This is red or green. It's it's red. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
what is happening. Yeah, uh, see it here already. It's not implemented the calculator. Yeah, here. So it, let's implement this as the first number plus second number. Build, run. Finished green. And in the output, see all done, 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 done. And 25 minutes, 20 minutes later, uh, we have our first spec flow scenario automated. Not that uh, time, uh, not, not much time spent. Good. Um, how, could, how do you normally continue with this? So there's two ways we can add now scenarios and areas. We'll do this later. Um, the other thing is we wanted to show you before is you have now these feature files and there you have your scenarios or specification described. But the problem is you're here in Visual Studio and your sources are in some Git repo and so. And the idea is behind these feature files that you share this with your the whole team or also with the customer. But how can they access this? They don't have perhaps the, the emissions or they don't uh, are familiar with source control systems and Visual don't want to have Visual Studio. I have no Visual Studio it's, uh, license. And that's where, where living, doc, living documentation comes into place. Living documentation is, is the end result what you get when you use tools for spec like specflow uh, and have a, a BDD um, approach to your project. And there you have then these scenarios with uh, nice and fancy in a website and you also see the test execution result. And we have a tool for that. It's called specflow plus living documentation. And I there are two versions, one for Azure DevOps, one for, for standalone, it's the spec for plus living doc generator. And it's, it's three steps to set up for a project about. So one is already done. So you need this spec for plus living doc plugin in your project. If you do this with the wizard, you have this automatically. And the next thing what you need is a command line tool. Uh, to generate it. And for that, we've, to install it, uh, let's open a command prompt. And the command for that is, uh, no, that's the wrong one. Is this, well, so it's implemented the .NET tool. So you say .NET tool. That's part of the .NET Core SDK or .NET 5 SDK. Then say, we want to install it uh, global and the name. And when you press enter, it takes some while. Okay, it's the first time. And also important, uh, as it's the first time, normally it's worked immediately. Uh, normally the problem is that you have to restart the command prop to, to work, but uh, it looks like they made some changes so you don't need to um, close the command prop and open a new one. That's also new for me. Um, if you have problems, simply start it again. So this living doc tool has a lot of command line parameters. So um, what you need is you need to execute this in, in uh, here in the output directory. Quickly switch to that in debug net core app. So already a long path. So what do, you, what do you need to, how do we create this living doc? So it's uh, one, one kind what I show you is, is this now. So it's a living doc. Then we say test assembly that we get the most information and features. 
then we give him the name of the test assembly. It's the spec flow calculator.specs BLN. And because we want test results, we say minus, minus T. And then there is a test execution JSON now. This file is generated by the this spectral plugin. And when we press enter, we see a living doc HTML was generated. Let's have a look in the folder. Living doc. Let's this is a fresh VM because not always. And what we have here is now let's give of this all. We have now here a web a website, a single HTML file. So it's one HTML file, but two Macs, but everything is included. And we have here our features, uh, our calculator example. And what you can see here is, um, here in this description, we used Markdown for images and links and formatting. And Living Doc is, um, yeah, rendering this correctly as uh, HTML. And yeah, we have the test results. We have here the, the check marks. And we also have here an analytics tab with different statistics. And you have also unused step definitions. So if your project getting bigger and bigger, uh, it can happen that um, you have to left missed removing steps that you don't use anymore. And then these are listed here. Good. Um, that's, that's yeah, single HTML file and that you can share with, with your team, with your stakeholders, customer. It's an HTML file, send them per email or by Teams or upload it to some, some web server where you want and then they can see how it looks like. Um, yeah, so that's living doc and now you have this you, and you generate this living doc normally in a CI CD pipeline. Uh, I don't show you this because there's so much CI CD tools there. I think we have 20, 25 or so on our list. And with this, you can set it up in your and, and get the HTML file and, and um, share how you want and how your, your system works. And if you have all this nice setup, you, that's, that's then when you add new scenarios and let's add one only to see a little bit more. And let's add um, a subtract scenario here. And you see we are all right, we have, um, we're reusing steps. So these steps are the definition is global. So you only have to define them once for your whole project. Don't have to do it per scenario or per feature file. They are global. And that's nice because if you if your project grows and grows, some when you get to this point where you don't have to implement a lot of new steps for new functionality because you have most of them already. You only combine them in different ways. Uh, in this case, we're missing one. And you see it's light, it's light, it's purple, the text. And when we say navigate here, we get a, a message that it's no step definition was found. Gives us the option to already copy this in the, to the clipboard. Say yes for the moment. There are also other options to generate the stuff. We have in the context menu some general step definitions where dialog opens. With and at the end, you get the same uh, stuff out of it. So go to our step definition file. Let's add the binding. Let's implement it. So it's actual result equals calculator subtract. And because we don't have this method, we need to create this method. So control dot for in Visual Studio for the assist stuff. 
and then F12 navigate here and then oh. first, first make the test red and then make it green. So we have not a scenario. It's not yet implemented. Let's run them first. And yeah, it's failing because not implemented. Now, uh, first numbers minus second number. And let's build it again. Run. Green. Nice. And then we generate our living doc again. Takes a moment. No. Normally it doesn't take so long. Okay, now finished. Let's refresh it. And we have the second scenario before all that's here. Good. And yeah, that's it from for, for, for that. So you have multiple scenarios and executed. And here now I can answer your question, uh, Vernetti. Um, the question is how to run multiple scenarios in one feature in a sequence top-down order. I have observed scenarios in the feature run in based on the alphabetic order. Um, From theory, you don't. You don't have scenarios that depend on each other. They have to be independent from each other um, because order of execution is not set in stone. Uh, depending on the test runner you're using, it's executed in some, some order. I think X unit goes as far as execute them automatically in random order and no no there's um, no alphabetic or or some other order um, and it's also uh, the, the runner does it I think in alphabetic order when I remember correctly um, the idea is behind Kirkham this that this is readable by every everybody in the team, uh, uh, not the team, all stakeholders and shareholders. So also the customers, non-technical people. And that's that's why it's Gherkin is so simple and you can use English or any other language um, to write them scenarios. So this is accessible for everybody. And if you then have, you have to, to read 10 scenarios to go to, until you understand the lemons, that's that's not accessible. So always try to don't have scenarios depending on each other. It's it's that's if you have this depending on each other, simply bad practice. So if you have this, you need to um, refactor the <clears throat> your scenarios. We often get this this question, and we we implemented on purpose, not such feature to have order because we believe that's bad practice. So I hope I answered it. Uh, probably not the answer you wanted to hear. Okay, some more information. So uh, he's using MS test spec for Selenium. Each feature will start with setting a context and continue validating each scenario. Um, for that, perhaps for that, what you're looking for is the background. In, in Gherkin, you have a background where you have also steps. And this background is executed for every scenario before, but you have only um, uh, write it once. Here. So perhaps it's that's what you, what you're looking for. Good. Um, so 
uh, I'm with that. So uh, with my part on the webinar is, is finished because before we start to get into the rest of the Q&A, uh, I have one last question for you. And that's simply uh, my team and I would like to know how and where did you hear about us? So about SpecFlow. Could quickly answer this. Then I will answer all your other questions. Cool, cool. Okay, so most of you have already heard about Cucumber. Wanted to try out in C Sharp. I hope you, you liked what you uh, saw today. Good, that was the last, last question for me. So back to your questions. So uh, Carol asks, if do you think Spectre is going to be available for JetBurners Rider? Uh, yes, uh, we are working on it right now. Um, Give me a moment that I find the link. So uh, thanks to commun some community members and what, what we, and we are partnering now with them. Um, we have a extension for Rider. It's still in development. So it will need some weeks until all the major features are there. Um, I show you this here on the browser. It's called Spectra for Rider. Um, you have also already navigation to the to the to the um, step bindings, code behind file generation. So skeleton generation is also working and so on and so on. So team is working. Sorry, heavily on that. And try it out, give us feedback. If you find any issues or bugs, uh, uh, then we can fix them. So team is working currently on it. I think three, four people are working the whole time on, on this. So uh, yeah, it will be available. So, good. Um, yeah, if you have other questions, uh, please use the tool. Uh, um, some stuff, so uh, background, how did we, um, uh, how did we decide to make a, a finally done a, a extension for Rider? We have a feature request forum on our community forum. Um, share the link. We have here join a conversation, and we have here feature requests forum, where where people uh, can can add their wishes, feature request wishes, and you can also vote on them. And yeah, Ryder got the most votes, uh, and then we decide, okay, yeah, now enough people want this uh, feature, uh, let's, let's do it and how you start it. So this is important uh, functionality uh, for us that we, we are only a small team, we are only limited, um, but this is a good way to show us what's, what's needed by your users out there. Um, Create new feature requests, vote, upvote the existing ones. Um, that's it's helping us a lot. We're always looking at these. And for general questions and discussions, so it's, it's rather new. So we have to send some months here this form. But this is, is if you have questions to go to, to Spectral, and so go to the community forum and ask them there. There's the community team is looking on it and we'll always find an answer answer for you 
Uh, so, the question, uh, we hope we'll be hosting another session for Selenium and SpecFlow. Um, uh, wasn't the plan, but I could do that. Um, what we what we did so, and I did not mention this yet. Um, all the recordings go on on our YouTube channel, so it's go spectrox slash YouTube. Share this here, and when I open this, you starts auto playing. So sorry for that. And all our videos are uploaded here, all the webinars, recordings, everything. And what I'm doing, um, I did every every week now, every two weeks. Um, on Thursday at 1 p.m. Central European time, I have a Twitch stream, two hours, where I show different stuff, how to use Backflow. And there I did a uh, four or five part series, how to use Backflow with uh, Selenium. So we have a full playlist here. I share this quickly to quickly with you. Uh, yeah, it's about 10 hours of video, so we could probably do a more condensed one as a webinar. I will have a look uh, into my calendar if this would be possible. But this is, the, uh, I think, the first start uh, where you can have a look uh, for content. So it's not only it's for Selenium. Um, we also did Appium, uh, Android applications. Uh, we using what did we also use rest shop um, currently I'm playing uh, I'm using it together with playwright uh, it's a selenium alternative alternative uh, cool stuff um, yeah but yeah uh, if you want such a webinar to a specific topic uh, ping me on Twitter, LinkedIn, or, or also put it in the feature request form uh, or in the general discussion. Let me know and then I will see what I can do. Good. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, the one is link is uh, Twitch. So streaming tomorrow um, on Twitch, TV Specflow, and I will also try to stream to YouTube. So if you're a subscriber on YouTube, you should also hopefully get a notification. Um, tomorrow it's, uh, oh, again, playwright how to uh, use different browsers. You only use one browser, but you can use also uh, yeah, different browser, Firefox, Edge, Chrome, and, and so on. Good. And yeah, if there aren't any other questions open, um, thank you for joining today. I uh, wish you had a nice rest of the day. For me, it's the end of the day. Uh, yeah. I'm on Twitter, LinkedIn, um, Specflow.org. We are Specflow is also on Twitter and LinkedIn. Follow us there. Uh, subscribe to our stuff that you um, get all the latest information. Also, when Rider is, 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 is finished, finished. Um, the major stuff is, is there. Uh, stay tuned. Um, as said, the re recording will go online so you can. We watch it later if if you missed something or was too quick. Yeah, uh, have a nice day and uh, I hope I see you in the community forum. Bye.